Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45. Woo! Kind of a special one this time. Uh, we, we did our first interview yeah. ever. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was good fun Daunting. with uh, yeah. Dan from the Ingenesis Project. It was really fantastic speaking to him. So yeah, yeah we'll, uh, so we're recording this after we've already recorded. So mm-hmm. it's very it's very backwards. And stuff. Yes, but uh, we'll play that at the end. Instead of doing the singularity topic, we'll be uh, playing the interview instead. And uh, unfortunately, we did have a little bit of a problem at the end. The majority <laughs> of the interviews there, but then through processing, um, some of the video cut out. So the audio will still be there. So that's all so great. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, Story this week: trading stocks at the speed of light. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, this one is the history of social networking. And it sounds boring, but really, really interesting. Trust me on this. That's all we got. We've just got the two. Sure. <laughs> Many on the interview. Awesome. Okay, this one was crazy. Like, yeah. I saw it, it's another singularity health thing. This guy's writing some awesome stuff. Mm. But <laughs> I didn't notice it until people started talking about it on Facebook. I just like, glanced over and I was like, oh, pff, that's yeah. really boring. But what this is, is um, these guys, a physicist called Alex. Waste no gross, and a mathematician called Cameron Freer have actually optimized or actually worked like looked at the globe and worked out where is the optimal location to place servers to place computers for trading uh, securities. Because the idea is, the idea is at the moment now, uh, computers basically trade stocks, you know, to make a profit uh, at you know the, like the speed of light. They they try to get them, and you know, within milliseconds they're trading them back and forth. Mm. So. If you can actually, but but this problem is even when you're you're transmitting all that data at the speed of light through optic fibers, mm. you're still you know getting the data in at hundreds of milliseconds, which is a bit slow. Yeah, yeah. So these guys have gone through and they've looked at all the different trading areas and stock markets in the world, and they've worked out on the map where the optimal locations are to place these computers mm-hmm. to bring that those milliseconds down, so that you can trade. Say between like you know London and Tokyo, like you can work out where the best place is to actually um, put the computer because that's where they'll equal points distance or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's where it is. Um, Hells, yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. Like, uh, what's the example here? So like, uh, I think between Tokyo and New York, it's like somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. Good anyway. old Pacific. So, so what uh, what people are going to actually start doing with this now? And apparently, a lot of like you know, your you stock exchanges and uh, those big guys like JP Morgan and all them, hmm. they're already doing this, but it's very secretive. Whereas this is like a scientific paper. Yeah, but well, I, I like that image that you've got there, showing all these blue dots coming across where you yeah, should actually cool. put all of the uh, data centers. And it's great. It's kind of like forming lines of uh, the nervous system, I guess, because I mean that's what the the informational traveling back and forth, allocating capital. So they're kind of like the nerves of the earth actually uh, forming out yeah. around. <laughs> during the... Yeah, but it's not just like between countries and big cities. It's actually you know into like between cities, like you know between Sydney and Melbourne, for example. Or, yeah, yeah. Or anywhere, um, and even within cities. But this cool thing that actually he brought up at the end is if you actually have a optimal location to put these servers, Mm -hmm. then your competitors are going to put the servers in the same place. Like if that is literally, this is the optimal place to put your computers to to trade stocks and securities, then all your competitors will be there. And so you'll almost create a singularity because the computers are just going to trade it amongst each other. They'll just be sitting, they'll just be sitting in server files, sitting next to each other, just trading back and forth rather than having to trade across oceans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like obviously you get all the information coming in externally, but as soon as that information's in, they'll just, they'll just trade back and forth until it's, that's great. Until it's done. Well, could you even have it as, um, I'm I'm just thinking like far in there, but wouldn't the shortest point from anywhere on the earth be the very center? You could have all the computers (laughs) at the very center of the earth, like maybe around the the core, wherever you could. I know it's not possible now, nowhere even near possible, but eventually. materials, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that'd be the shortest distance, then all the information goes there and all comes back out. There'd pretty much be infinite energy down there too. You've got just geothermal energy. Yeah. Uh, I know there's tons and tons of problems with that, but just thinking about getting as close as possible, that that might be it. Yeah. So with this now, (laughs) this is essentially computers are now already controlling our entire financial system. Oh, yeah. I mean, trades and deals and actually, you know, working out where's the best place to put capital, where's the most efficient place to route capital, Mm. that's being done by computers now, and that's just going to get even more accurate. Yeah. And, you know, that that, that typical, uh, what's that saying? It's like, you know, whoever controls the money flow, you know, controls the popular sort of thing. Yeah. Controls the money supply, yeah. There's lots of things around it, but, uh, yeah. Computers do. 
I, I really like that idea of like having like all the, the computers going there and even like lines of computers. You could have like all the computers in a line because whoever could actually like, you've got the singularity there, like say you've got, you know, London and New York, you're in a very sp uh, center of the Atlantic, then whoever's in the third because then you get the information before they get it quicker. And yeah, you yeah. Get all this <laughs> stuff. And you're oh, operating like fun. milliseconds, like yeah. you're trying to bring that latency down as much as possible. Well, it's funny that even like Google has to actually account for that. Yeah. But, like, that's a big problem with theirs, that they strategically position their data centers from no, no matter where you are in the world that you actually get it faster. Yeah, get faster searches, yeah. yeah. It's kind of sweet. That's crazy. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go on to my one now, which is uh, the history of social networking. And the reason I picked this one was uh, when we were speaking with Dan, we were speaking a lot about like, you know, the future of uh, social uh, media and everything and creating a whole economy and like the next whole paradigm of it, which we'll hear about in a little bit. But I thought it'd be really interesting to actually look into the past. And I found this absolutely spectacular um, article. It's called uh, BothSidesOfTheTable.com and it's by this guy called Mike Suster. And uh, yeah, really, really fantastic. It's got a big, a big article about the, the history of it. It goes all the way back to uh, the things called uh, like the well and uh, like CompuServe and yeah. all this stuff. Like this old, really like old school, um, you know, networking, like, you know, board and board systems in that way. You'd have classifieds, you'd have people talk, you'd have people sharing information. Kind of like what our parents would have done if they were really hardcore geek. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I know I've worked with someone before. I used to say they were like really, really big on that. But um, yeah, just, just going through and seeing what was there. And the one that was very interesting was uh, the idea of monopolies. That uh, there was this speak uh, talking about um, AOL, and AOL was the pretty much the original walled garden. And like I, I never used AOL, so I don't have much experience with this. Like, uh, yeah, it was kind of before our time. It was a little bit. I remember getting those CDs, and I was very disappointed. I got a little lucky dip at one of my school's fairs, and even the teacher apologized to me. So. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> 50 hours of AOL. Oh. But uh, yeah, it was a really cool thinking about AOL, but they were like the original World Garden. They only had 1.6 million people, I think, at the peak, if that's right. But they were all paying um, $20 a month to get it. And yeah. AOL was just the same. Uh, they had all of the different features that pretty much Facebook has now, just not done as well. Yeah, and so not, not trying to be a bit like a separate internet one. They were, they were totally closed. That you just, went online, <laughs> but it was just AOL's world. It was just, you, you didn't escape outside onto someone else's service. It was all an AOL service. Yeah. And so then, um, but then of course the World Wide Web came around and then everyone went onto the World Wide Web and went around everywhere. And then there was the rise of Yahoo. And the rise of Yahoo was really great because it did pretty much the same thing as AOL, but actually for free. You didn't have to pay all this crazy expensive things. So what's the, what's the kind of, what's the overarching trend then? Because I mean, the um, internet, it kind of from the beginning, it was all about connecting people together. It was, yeah. And that became too difficult. Yeah, well, see, something. Um, well, you see all the, the, the thing that I've kind of picked up from here, there are so many trends that are coming from here. Like this article is so dense, it's, it's spectacular. But just the alternation between, um, say, walled gardens and actually being open, that, that yeah. that's actually gone back and forth quite a bit. And um, yeah, just how people are, are saying that, you know, Facebook's the monopoly. I mean, you ask anyone now around, everyone says that, you know, Facebook's the, the monopoly. Like, Facebook's won, they've done it, they've dominated. Yeah. But they've said that about everyone in the past. They've said that about, like, Microsoft. <laughs> they were the monopoly, they've done it, they've dominated. AOL, and when they merged with Time Warner, that was meant to be the media to end all media. That was meant to be, like, oh my god, the greatest thing ever. Um, and oh, they own us. They monopolize a segment. I mean, they did monopolize Microsoft's, a segment, Microsoft's yeah. still, you know, desktops. Google true, still search. True. But it's still, it still, it moves, it moves away from there. Like, you know, always something new comes away. Like even going away from a little bit of monopoly that you you had Yahoo and everything. There were uh, articles linking here saying like, you know, Yahoo was the big new thing. Like that, that was it. That's yeah. very, I don't know. Uh, it just seems a uh, very interesting, um, especially in regards to what's coming up in the future that Facebook isn't um, unstoppable. They're, 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 they're like, they're, they're going to be the big yeah. thing, but... I don't know, I think people uh, people will change. I mean, you look in the past, like, pl please read this, it's fantastic. It's even a lovely little PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so that's great, that's, a, that's another part of it. Um, saying that, yeah, it won't be around there for a bit. People's tastes change, and I think 10 years from now, we'll actually look back, and the idea of saying that Facebook was a monopoly that couldn't have been beaten, we'll probably laugh at, because every single monopoly that's happened before just hasn't really gone through. Uh, I disagree, I think Facebook's gonna be the platform, and then everything will build on top. Hmm. That, they'll, they'll become they'll become obsolete in the sense that in the sense that everything will just be built on top. It will be a norm. Wow, uh, that, that was actually just a, a, a Skype message saying Assange has been arrested. Really? My dad. My dad has just said Assange has been arrested. So definitely oh, checking out that as soon as this happens. I've got the insurance file. That means he's going to get the password out. That would be that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I think you've been following, you guys have been following with the Julian Assange. Yeah. Anyway, well, um, <laughs> check out this. That uh, I'm, I'm not sure what. Uh, 
what more to say with this, but uh, yeah, Facebook isn't the, the dominant platform. We're going to see new ones. Yeah. And it's all just about oh, doing it easier than something. I, I hate that I'm butchering this so much, but it's very, there's a lot of information here. Highly, highly recommend reading this if you want to get an idea of where social networks have been and even an idea of the, the future. Well, yeah. You great don't know way. where it's been to know where it's going. Yeah, and so it's a great way to lead into the interview. Okay, uh, we've got our first ever interview today with uh, Dan Robles, the director of the Ingenesis Project. Um, hey Dan, how you going? <laughs> Welcome to High 55. Oh, pretty good. We're doing, we're doing good out here. It's uh, pretty far away. It's yeah. a great experiment you're running. <laughs> yeah, you're all the way in Seattle, aren't you? Yeah, we're in Seattle. Yep. And it's uh, it's not raining today. <laughs> nice. No, we'll see. It's uh, flooding here, so uh, it <laughs> balances out, I think. Yeah, they're, they're chopping up for global warming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, give us a brief rundown on what the Ingenesis project is, and I guess what you hope to accomplish with it. Okay, well, you can probably have to stop me because you know I could talk forever about this thing, <laughs> and uh, largely because I have been doing this forever. It started out back in 1994. I was part of the NAFTA Future Recognition Document. Uh, for engineering professionals, what I would do is I was um, helping Mexican engineers pass the American board exams. And this is part of NAFTA. They were trying to, NAFTA was interesting because it was the first attempt to treat knowledge like a, a, like a potato or an avocado. I mean, to treat knowledge like, a, like a, an actual product. And it was the first attempt to do so, and it failed miserably. I mean, it's, it's really too bad. Um, but that was the first attempt to treat knowledge like a tangible object. So I was involved with that, and that, that the idea has been kind of on my mind for many, many years. I've been trying to develop these ideas. Can knowledge actually be traded like a potato or something? And uh, then along comes social media, and uh, we see uh, this whole new paradigm coming along. So I've, I've been developing uh, an idea around that, and um, that's what the Adjust Project tries to do. Awesome. That's fantastic. Cool. So is it along the trend of social media using people actually just discussing things online mainly to actually create a, a knowledge economy? Is that the rough idea or...? Well, it, it's a little bit more, more profound than that. I mean, if you look at classical economics, um, land, labor, and capital are the factors of production. These are the things that the merchant class will allocate in order to produce stuff. And then you want to build a car, you have to have some land, you have to get your labor together, and you need capital to buy your machinery and so forth. That's big classical economics. Now, the, the new way of doing things, I suppose you overtake that and replace land, labor, and capital with, say, social, creative, and intellectual capital that exists resident in the human being. And then everything else stays the same. What does that look like? Okay, and it was just an academic topic in, in the past, but today it's actually quite relevant. I mean, how much land are you allocating today? Are we allocating today? How much, you know, our labor is a completely different idea, you know, 14 minutes of our labor now is different than, you know, working behind a machinery. Uh, and then, of course, the idea of capitalism, is there's a huge constraint on our capital market. So all of these questions just are, have to be rewritten now, and we look at, okay, so what's, what's that going to look like? Far out, that, that is so cool. Okay, uh, I think I'm on it's the... out there, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. it's definitely out there, but I've, I'm on the same page as you there, but I mean, you can actually start up a business now for so little money coming down, and really all that constrains you is the knowledge uh, that you have. And I mean, you can crowdsource and go out there and do it that way. Uh, that absolutely sounds awesome. Yeah. Right, but there are some misconceptions, because a lot of people think that, you know, like, for example, cloud is, is uh, a program in the United States where, where you get a cloud score based on your Twitter activity. Um, nothing economic can actually happen until people get together to build something. So, you know, Twitter is a horrible proxy for productivity. So, you know, we're kind of gotten it wrong in, in that sense. We're thinking, okay, well, Twitter is just a new way of measuring productivity. Well, it's not. Um, so we still have to remain sort of true to those fundamentals. What are we producing? Where are we producing? How are we producing? And that, that, that element of productivity is something that's kind of lost, and we're kind of all trying to grapple with that. What constitutes productivity in social media? 